This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we've got some no cooling call here. This should be fairly simple. Uh, went through and just looked at things. Filter was dirty. First thing I did, came over here. Not that you should have a sight glass on it because you can't charge by that anyway on a regular air conditioner, but you can see the bubbles in there. But then the biggest thing is you can feel that this is not warm at all come over to the suction line it's really cold I'm like okay well we're cold there we're not warm at all here for the most part and we're looking at the coil and it's not been washed off for a while let's go in here and look at the air handler so the air handler is this thing no light in here filters just a little dirty it's changed back in April here in July, so May, June, July, three months. It, uh, it's a old convenience store, so it's got a lot of dirt in the ductwork. Coming in here, cold. Filter dryer's in the right direction, so we're good there. Hopefully it's not a train coil, because mismatching coils is not usually a good idea. Somebody took our sticker off, which is kind of funny. New coil, hmm, look at that. New coil, 31230ADP. So they used a ADP coil in here, which I guarantee you was not us, which is probably why our sticker was ripped off. And now that it don't work, they call us. Mm-hmm. Now granted, how long has it not been working for? So probably gonna have to take all this ductwork stuff here off, or this cover, and uh, get into the coil. I about bet you it's low. Yeah, I seen oil out there on the outside. Now, the other thing I seen was as usual, people think that, well, my air conditioner don't work, so I'm gonna turn it colder. So I'm gonna turn it down to 50 something, cause that makes it better. And anybody in the field would know that all it does is just make it run longer. It doesn't get no colder, it doesn't come out colder, but that is a crap ton of oil looking there. Now granted, is that because we were leaking at one time? Cause I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff here. Let's see what we can find down here in the bottom, if there's anything major got water down in the bottom which it rained last night so it could have been from the white of the rain yeah let's go ahead and put the gauges on here and see what's going on chances are I bet you it might be froze up I mean yeah we're flashing it's between fr froze up and low on charge you know what they replaced this uh, condenser unit I didn't even notice it they chopped out the filter dryer that was out here attached back onto it here with this thing and that's not a carrier so to speak it's a carrier corp but it's not a th officially a carrier which we had a carrier here before so they must have had somebody oh yeah there we go somebody that bleeds a plastic cap keeps the refrigerant in when indeed half the time it just mainly just pushes the Schrader core in because they don't have that in correctly they did not replace the fan cycle control because that's an extra, you know, 100 bucks. It'd be funny if that's what's leaking. Hopefully we didn't replace it. That'd be really shitty, wouldn't it? Man, so if this whole thing was replaced in March or April and it's that dirty, you would think we'd get this thing cleaned up a little better. Okay, we are running a get on the right refrigerant. Wow. If this is 410A, which it is, because you don't know now because all this new crap coming out to replace it. We are running a 44 degree evaporator. Huh. Let's go ahead and see what kind of super heat we got. Let's go ahead and do our sub cooling too while we're at it. Hopefully that inside unit has a TXV. This one here says it should have one. That's if they match it up, which I don't know if ADP will match up with this or not. It's hard to say. I know Linux never did well with anything but their own coils. Not saying this is a Linux, but EDP, good coil for the most part, but boy, we just put that in a shitty spot, didn't we? Barely get the hoses on there. We won't be able to turn it off because, you know, we'll loosen that up, see if we can reposition it. So we are running an 86 degree condensing temperature. We have one degree of superheat, barely two degrees of subcooling. Subcooling says we're low, superheat says we're overcharged, or we have a malfunctioning TXV or an airflow problem. Uh, theoretically, the TXV's job is to maintain superheat, so even if you had an airflow problem within reason, it should be able to modulate some of that. But 
we could be so low that which uh, we got over 100 we got right at a 130 degree differential between the suction and the head so uh yeah let's let's see if we can go inside and pop that cover off i want to see where our coil's at see if it's plugged off with ice oh that's nice oh yeah that's that's really great <sighs> How much more money would it have been for a new line set or a new uh, new whip? One that you could actually get in there. 275 is a little low on 410A with a 50 degree differential. That's not going to fly. Not that you should have to fan cycle right now anyway, but I'm going to find out what's going on here. Ooh, that didn't sound good. Yeah, it's not good. Could be my hoses. One hose leaks a little bit. I got to put a new, new, new uh, seal on it. Let's pop this top, see what we got. See if we're not leaking on this. That or it's the actual unit. Let's move this over here away from the search area. Am I bitching and complaining? You're damn right I am. Because when you don't do things right, this sucks. Now granted, there's always times it's because the customer won't spend the money or whatever the case, but yeah that feels oily yep we got problems camille i am not picking up anything in here and just means it's right here i wonder if somebody unhooked their hoses because like i said i'm gonna have a hard time turning off my my ball valve there and sucking it back into the system i wonder if they just blew it all in inside the unit and just made a heck of a mess it's possible I'm not getting anything. I mean, really, my pressures aren't horrible. Fan control, it's a little out of whack. I mean, it was well above freezing, so it's fine there on that. 410 has such a differential. The 100 degree liquid uh, comes right in 318. And say we want to shut it off, maybe say 90. This is how I do it for refrigeration, 275. They got their coming on at 275. So a lot of times I do it on a basis a bit off of uh, saturated suction pressure and, and combination of those things, but usually I just base it off of liquid line with more for refrigeration, shooting for 100, give or take, maybe 10 above it, 10 to 15 above 100, and shutting off no later than 90 degrees. With 410A, usually running 10 to 15 degrees over ambient on average. You probably could go a little lower on some of it, but even then the pressure's still gonna be higher. I wanna go inside and look at the evaporator and take a look inside there. Uh, looks like everything out here, other than looking like it's got a leak, is fine from what I see, unless I'm not picking it up. I'm gonna go ahead and wash this out now. That way it can dry as we're working on that inside unit. Knock some of this crap off. All right, looking at this condenser here, it's completely, completely impacted. I'm gonna go ahead and get it washed off too. That'll be another service call for later, if not. And we're kind of busy right now. Go here and check these. These are probably packed full of crud. So you bring the outside air in to a room that's really hot. Yeah, they're packed full of crap. They're pretty bad. That washes out real quick. Fan's still running, which will help pull any air across the coil if it is frozen and help to uh, melt it. The old one had a 25 degree delta T. That's my writing. I always like putting that sort of thing on so you have something to go off of when you come back. I got to rip all that crap apart all today. Oh yeah, they drilled a hole and put that back on so that you can't remove this now. A huge mistake on installer's part. It looks nicer that way. And look at that, we practically bent that over. Um, you can't get into it now to work on it. That's the problem with doing that. It should have split it, which I'll have to split it and that way you can pull it off which like i said it's a cost savings things reason why they did it this way all right well that nut 
right there. That tends to leak. Yeah, hey, I'm not seeing nothing. I wonder if it was froze up and it's probably melted. I mean, it took me a good probably 20, 30 minutes out there. So if it had a light coating of frost across it, it would have probably melted off by now. But man, that liquid line was cold. Subcooling was low. You got an old line set there, which could have rubbed through up here. Went out and got me a small piece of sheet metal out of the truck. I always carry a little bit with me. And we'll put a little piece over top of that. I made sure there's nothing behind the uh, coil box. Make sure I wasn't gonna hit any line set or any uh, refrigerant lines. Cause that could make for a real crappy day. I offset that off to the side. That way it doesn't go into the next piece behind it, making it harder to remove. From the way it was described to me and from what I'm seeing, this supposedly was cold when they set it up, but we're gonna go ahead and adjust it if we need to adjust it. And I told them it needs a TXV, so we're gonna try this first and kind of go from there. This has a bar underneath of it, so this won't uh, get pulled through. What I actually did, and you're gonna laugh, I've done it once before, um, but actually washed it out and gets it pretty clean. It makes it a little soggy, but with that bar underneath there, it'll hold it in place. We'll give that a minute or two to pull any air through that thing. So right now she's restricted as I'll get out. Okay, we are 83 degrees out here. We're on an 85 degree discharge, which is coming up some. It's still a little bit wet, the coil. 45 degree evaporator, 15 degree su uh, superheat, four degree subcooling. Four degree subcooling, yet we're still flashing off in the sight glass. Oh yeah, definitely got plenty of liquid there. It's four degree subcooling. I always find that kind of be funny. So if the science is right, and you truly are, we're on 410A, we're on the right side, four degrees subcooling. Tell me why do we have a side glass that is not solid? A little bit of hocus pocus there. I'm sure somebody will leave a comment down below. I'd be kind of curious. You're not supposed to use side glass anyway, just so you know. If you don't have a receiver, you shouldn't be using a side glass. You can use it as a moisture indicator. I put one on my own home one just so I can make sure that it's actually feeding and stuff like that. It's a nice indication, kind of gives you a visual that if it's completely empty, obviously we've got a problem, um, you know, for the layman. So 13 degrees superheat, I would hate to even venture to say that we've got an issue with the refrigerant charge, even though I don't like the way it's running with, um, with an orifice. If that starts to drop super low, then we gotta look at airflow further than just the filter. Uh, I need to look around the store and see what our, if all of our registers are open, make sure we got enough airflow through that way. I guess we could probably do some static pressure too. Let's go ahead and get this thing on. We'll go ahead and check some indoor temperatures here, see what we got going on. Get the 63 out of that one. 71 out of that one. 70, 61, 60 degrees on that one. 61 area on that one. Mainly we've got our turn grills there in the center and a bunch of these little registers. Okay, we're getting 60 out of that one there. Getting 61 out of that one there. Still not warm, it's cold. Uh, everything tells me about this is just wrong. It's just wrong. I'd like to see a TXV on here. That way we can build up some more um, refrigerant in the condenser. What are you gonna do? All right, we're holding right in here about 11 degrees on the superheat. 267 on the head, which is 86 degrees. I don't, I don't know. I would like to see that head pressure control cycling on and off higher. As much as I don't really like to see it cycle on and off, it's what we're gonna need to see done. I'd like to see it more along the lines of 310. 
at least. And right there still stays running, which is a good thing. Subcooling came up. Go figure. I'm actually getting some warm, warm line set there. Of course, now we're going to flood back instead. Jeez. I, it's just not matched right. I don't like it. I'm going to recommend it gets put to a TXV. That way, if it don't work, I mean, we're not technically hitting zero or negatives on the, the superheat. It's not where I like it at. I mean, our evaporator's staying way plenty high. Subcooling goes down to nothing. Jeez. We're going to set this control a little lower so when it does trigger back on, it won't shut off until it gets to down below 70. Like I said, we're only kicking on at 330, which is 102 degrees. Subcooling's all over. I'm sure it's with it all shifting, the psychometrics and all that happy stuff. It's, I mean, this works, but I mean, in reality, you should really have a package unit with an economizer on it, but it costs more money for that. Superheats at seven and stays on, so yeah. Let's go ahead and get this thing unhooked. All right, so I washed this filter out, then air dried it out with the condenser and my blower, and we're pretty dry now. It's, uh, you can see through it. It's good enough till we can get back. Okay, we're at 78.6 coming back. Let's see what we got up here. I'll try it with and without the filter in there. It, uh, before I dried that filter out, boy, she was whistling a little bit. Don't recommend doing that, but since it had a bracket under it and stuff, I can get away with it today. But it's either that or just brush the crap out of it to where it's hardly anything left as far as the threads. So I wasn't real thrilled about doing that. 59.5, 59.5. So right in about 21 degrees. And I had 25 before with the old one. So 78.6, let's just say 79. So you're right at 20. Uh, 20 point, it's just close enough to 20. Now let's go ahead and change the filter out. Pull it out a little bit. See if that starts to go up in temperature. And it's coming back down a little bit. So as it dries out, it'll get better. But at least we got airflow through it. That should work. And like I said, we got that panel on there. So it's as good as we can do for today.